Hey kids, Mr. Flyer here, hope you're well, and welcome to part two of July 2019's Bike News, the segment on the show where we look back at uh, issues of MCN and I pick out some of my favourite stories from the preceding month. So if you're interested in the bike news uh, for July 2019, stick around and stay tuned. Okay then, two more uh, papers to go through. If you haven't seen part one of the July uh, bike news, you might want to go back and watch that first. Posted that a couple of days ago, I'll put a link up here somewhere. Uh, go and have a watch of that and then come back to part two because this is a continuation. Uh, I've got a few stories to go through from uh, the latest two papers from MCN uh, and then I've got some parish notices to give you some uh, information about what's coming up on the Listen and Flyer channel over the next couple of weeks so you're going to want to stick around to the end to, uh, to watch that. Alrighty then, without further ado, let's crack on with the bike news then. Uh, first story I've picked out here is this one, uh, Blood Bikers Gain Reprieve is the uh, headline here. Uh, I'm really pleased about this because a, a few months ago on Bike News I reported how this particular um, blood bike group, which is the Warwickshire and Solihull blood bikes, had been basically displaced uh, by the um, health authority that they work for, but for a, for a contract that actually was paid for, whereas the blood biking is all voluntary. Well, I'm absolutely chuffed to say that uh, that the uh, University Hospital Coventry and Warwickshire NHS Trust has reversed that decision and they've given them uh, the blood bikers that part of the contract back in. So that's absolutely great news. So these guys are back on their bikes doing sterling business, um, delivering uh, all sorts of medical stuff um, for the local hospital. So that's really good news. Glad to hear that uh, common sense has prevailed and that the blood bikers uh, continue to do their great work there. So good, great story to start with. Alrighty, next, uh, next one I picked out. It's all about the style, uh, is the headline here. This is the new uh, BMW R18 uh, concept bike. Uh, we've talked about it before here on Bike News. It's an incredible uh, looking machine. Uh, I mean, it is a concept bike, but uh, they, they do seem to be quite confident that something like this is gonna be put into production. Um, in fact, it says, it's months from production, but uh, it doesn't say how many months. Uh, but it does, you know, they're, you know, they're implying it's definitely going to be made. 114 bhp, um, 1.8 litre, this massive boxer engine, 1800 cc. Um, again, BMW are becoming synonymous with boxers, aren't they? Well, I say becoming, they always have been, I guess. Uh, and this is the biggest one they've, they've ever made. Uh, I think it's uh, incredible. It says in the article here, actually, production builds by November, which seems very soon to me. Um, but there we go, we shall see. We have been seeing pictures of this bike, little teasers for a while. Maybe it's closer to production than we think, but uh, I love the looks of it. Whether I want to buy one over, say, the new Triumph uh, Rocket 3 that we've been teased with pictures of, I don't know, I'd have to see them both. This looks much more kind of old school looking than the new Triumph does. Uh, the new Triumph is, is, looks like a modern um, take on bruiser muscle bike, whereas this looks like a, just like an older muscle bike, if you, if you see what I mean. Which one do you prefer? Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, I'm, generally speaking, I'm not a big fan of the big sticky out cylinders on the Boxer engines, as much as I'm a, you know, sometimes accused of being a BMW fanboy because I'm always going on about my GS, which of course has a boxer engine. Uh, one of the things that w went against the GS when I was selecting an adventure bike was the fact that it had the boxer with the sticking out cylinders. I don't like the look of it. The great thing of it is it means the um, center of gravity is low. Uh, it means the bike is easy to manhandle around and this one will be exactly the same. But uh, but there we go. What do you think of that? The uh, uh, R18 concept, goodness knows how expensive that's going to be. Um, I would wager it might be more expensive than the Triumph, but I don't know. We'll see. Lots of exciting bikes coming out again. What a great year it's been for, for new motorcycles. And what a great era generally we're in, uh, if you're in the motorcycle buying public. All right, next story here. Sales Seesaw is the little, uh, is the little article that um, I've pointed out down here. It's basically it's talking about the fact that uh, bike sales were good at the start of the year and they've dipped a little bit. But the reason, the thing that uh, drew me to it is this little picture of a Royal Enfield Interceptor, which remains uh, selling really well and still remains the best 650cc up um, selling bike. So in that segment of 650 and above, if that makes sense, the Royal Enfield is absolutely outstripping everything else. So great news as somebody that's just bought one of these and I entirely understand why it's a great little bike. Um, this is rapidly becoming the Royal Enfield show, isn't it? I'm sorry, I'm just in that, um, in that honeymoon period with my bike where I'm loving it. Okay, next one. What's this? Might be a bit of a surprise. It was a while ago and I marked these up. New Panigale V4 is Ultimate 916. Yeah, now this is interesting. So I love the Panigale V4. I, I borrowed one. I was lucky enough to borrow one for a couple of weeks um, about seven or eight months ago from Ducati. And I absolutely loved it. It's my current favourite sports bike. I think it looks beautiful and it rides beautifully. It's an, an incredible bit of kit. But what they've done now at Ducati is brought out a um, what they call in the Panigale V4 25 Anniversario 916. <laughs> uh, when I say anniversary, I should have said 
and a Vesario probably. Anyway, here we are, here's a picture of it. It looks lovely. Um, so I'm nothing against this bike per se, but what I think is odd about it is that they've taken a um, Panigale and they're basically calling it the ultimate 916. It clearly is not a 916, um, it's a Panigale. Um, so I just I wonder if, you know, in 20 years time, is there gonna be an anniversary Anniversario Bolognia Panigale Anniversario 916, if you see what I mean, you know an anniversary of the anniversary one. Um, I don't know, that, that, there's something about this where, you, where you're calling one bike another. Maybe I'm missing the point here. Uh, maybe I'm labouring the point. Anyway, there's something about that that just feels wrong to me, I don't know, maybe I'm just being daft. But it does look lovely. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to buy one. 500 being built only, and they're 36,995 pounds. They're probably all sold already. Um, but they, again, like all these exotic bikes that we see that are out of our reach, um, it's great that they're made, aren't they? And there's no arguing, it does look an absolutely fantastic bike. And there's a picture of Foggy, uh, who was uh, at the launch at Laguna Seca, um, which is um, in California. In fact, I drove past Laguna Seca myself only two weeks ago when I was on my family holidays down that way. Um, it's a shame that, uh, you know, didn't know that was on. Not that I would have been able to gate crash it or anything, but um, would have been would have been nice to have seen. Anyway, there we go. So that's the new Panigale V4 Ultimate 916. What do you think about these bikes that... Um, ape back or are out to celebrate previous bikes. Not sure about that myself, I think we should move forward. Okay, next thing. Talking points, so this is the, uh, this is the uh, letters page once again, and this one is high cost of no garage. It's a letter from somebody called Adam Peake, who writes in and says that uh, to insure his 2006 Yamaha XT660, uh, he got a quote, uh, and the quote was 8,000 pounds. So 8,000 pounds for a 13 year old bike. Absolutely nuts. Um, that's incredible, and apparently that was an improvement on the, uh, the, the quote he got from Carol Nash, who asked him for 11,000. Unbelievable. Now, I don't know uh, how great his XT660 is, but I'll wager it's probably not worth anywhere near that. So what are these insurance companies doing here? I know they've got to you know, cover the losses, and they have some very clever people um, you know, looking at the risk here, but why, why are they um, asking for a higher premium than the bike's actually worth, surely? Just, just seems nuts to me. I made a video once entitled something like uh, Insurance It's Pants, I think it was. Go back, maybe Google it and have a look if you haven't seen it, where I basically kind of slag off insurance companies because I just think it's a license to print money in some cases. Certainly here, this, this seems unfair, um, but uh, I'm sure there's a, there's a story behind it. But uh, anyway, there we go. So what do you make of that? Can we beat that? Has anyone had an insurance quote for a bike uh, more than £8,000? I'll be very interested to hear. And similarly, what's the cheapest uh, you've come across? Uh, my cheapest I've come across was um, I recently insured my um, Royal Enfield Interceptor. I've got a multi-bike policy. I added it to the policy and it only added 56 quid. I thought that was great. That is the only advantage of getting older is your insurance prices go down. That is the only advantage. Okay, next story here. Oh, the MCN 250, my favourite test route that MCN do, and they're pitting a couple of bikes here, both of which I thought a bit meh about. So it's the Suzuki Katana and the Honda CB1000R. Uh, I have now ridden both these bikes. The Katana is 11,400 the Honda 12,600, so uh, 1,200 more. Um, both these bikes, they ride fine. Uh, they just didn't light my fire personally. The Katana, I personally just couldn't live with the looks. At this particular angle here on the front quarter, it doesn't look that bad, but I need a bike to look really lovely for me to want it to be living in my garage. That's not a bike that uh, makes me think it looks lovely, uh, but it does ride beautifully, there's no doubt about that. Whereas the CB1000 looks better, I think, uh, but when I rode it, I was just a little bit underwhelmed. There's nothing wrong with it, per se. Uh, it just d didn't really light my fire either. So these are two bikes, you know, I'm not too worried about. But uh, so interesting that they pit them. So it's sort of, this an odd one for me to pull out this. It's uh, which of the two mediocre bikes did they prefer? <laughs> well, they gave the, um, oh, and it's Nevesy. Michael Neves is my favorite reviewer in MCN. Uh, he gave the Honda four out of five and the Katana three out of five, which is interesting because a few weeks back when the Katana was launched, everyone was saying it was the best thing since sliced bread. Now it gets three out of five. Um, and uh, what's he saying? Basically he's saying they're both uh, incredible reliable, reliable bikes and can be thrilling, but they're both a bit pricey. Uh, he says that the, actually their lack of soul um, compared to their best rivals left them cold around the test route, so uh, hardly a resounding uh, recommendation there. They left them cold. Um, but I kind of agree with, with them there. I don't like either of these bikes in particular. I do apologise if you've recently bought one, but um, I'm not sure that just, just those two bikes aren't that exciting to me. Anyway, there we go. That's a bit of a negative thing, isn't it? I do apologise. Right, quickly move on to the next one. Okay, last paper before we get onto some parish notices here. First one I've pulled out of this um, 
Lotus Flowers is the title here. And there's a picture here of this uh, Lotus bike. Do you remember these? This is the Lotus C01. Uh, and I remember reading about this in MCN, well, it seems like years ago. It looked amazing at the time. There was a, when it was launched, it's got um, the front bit, the air intake looks a bit like the old uh, upside down intake from the Formula One cars from like the 1950s. And the original um, one that they brought out uh, was in the JPS black and gold. And it looked absolutely awesome. And I never heard anything of it since. Um, but the thing is, um, they were selling the bike for 70 grand when it came out, and I remember saying that that was too expensive for a bike, which of course it is. Well, the point is now, uh, they're so exclusive, uh, if you buy one second hand now, they've, they've been sales where they've gone for three times that price. So, although I'm always saying, I love the fact these bikes exist, but who buys these and they're way too expensive, actually, maybe they're a brilliant investment. If you've got 70 grand handy and you can get your hand on one of the, hands on one of these, you know, three years down the line, to, uh, 210 grand for one absolutely incredible presumably they don't ever get ridden um it was launched in 2013 actually so there we go that is uh, what's that six years ago longer ago than i thought and actually made in the us uh, amazing looking bike not a great picture of one there but uh, it, it is an incredible bike and now selling for three times seventy thousand pounds incredible uh wish i'd bought one then not that i had 70 grand maybe i should have sold a house or something and uh, bought one anyway Next up, a Moto2 racer for the road. Now this is the big story, I think, of this month uh, that everybody's been raging about. And how long have we been talking about um, Triumph bringing out a new version of the Daytona? We all knew that with the new, or newish, um, 675 triple engine that they now uh, have in the Moto2 racer, and also, of course, having the current street triple and so on, um, that, of course, a Daytona would make a lot of sense. So they stopped making the 675 back in 2017 was the last one of them, I believe. Uh, so there's been a, like a gaping hole in their range for a small sports bike. And now they're saying in 2020, they're gonna be bringing out this new version um, of the Daytona, limited edition. They're only gonna make 765, um, but it's gonna be an absolutely epic bike with that engine in it as well. It's got a lovely paint scheme. It's got a sort of a, it's got a carbon fiber finish and it sort of apes the union flag. I think it looks brilliant. Uh, don't know what the prices are yet, but I imagine it's gonna be a very expensive bike if it's limited edition. Um, but yeah, spring 2020, they're saying, um, and I think all is gonna be revealed, August the 23rd is a note I made here, so I think they must be doing some sort of reveal on price then. But uh, yeah, well, what a bike that's gonna be, and uh, that would be really nice to have a ride of, wouldn't it, I think. Uh, who knows, maybe they'll do a limited edition version. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be a Triumph Factory Custom, probably not, more, probably more like a Moto2 branded bike. Um, and then maybe we'll see a productionized version maybe a year after that or something. I don't know, that's what often happens, isn't it? But uh, let's see, but yeah, great to see the Daytona back. I'm sure that's gonna be an absolutely stonking bike. Okay, Bobber to get bigger balls while we're on the subject of Triumphs. The uh, Triumph Bobber, we've not heard much about this, have we, recently? And I heard, I can't remember where I heard this, but when the Bobber first came out, it sold massively because it was so such a radical departure for a retro bike and it was flying off the shelves. Well, I heard recently that it's, it's, they can't really sell them now. So I don't know what's going on there, whether there was a bit of a bubble. Everybody that wanted them have now bought them and there aren't new bars coming on, I don't know. But anyway, uh, there's this new version being spied out in the wild uh, and this is kind of a performance version of it, is what MCN is saying. So it's got twin Brembo monoplot calipers up the front. I think the one I rode had a single disc at the front uh, and the brakes weren't very good. That was one of my criticisms. Uh, it's got Olin suspension as well. Uh, it's got uh, Avon Cobra tires, uh, but they're saying Triumph might opt for a sticky uh, Pirelli rubber. Okay, that's a bit of speculation there. Um, what else has it got? Oh, it's saying it might be, hello, computer's gone to sleep. It might be a Triumph factory custom version of the bobber. If that's the case, then they're thinking it'll cost uh, probably about 16 grand, whereas the normal Bobber R, if it's a new R model, would be 14 grand or thereabouts, again, is their guess. So what do you make of that? Do you think that's going to reinvigorate uh, the Bobber for 2020? Uh, they're saying if it's a Bobber R, the power could be 80 brake horsepower. Don't know. Um, again, hats off to Triumph for trying something different. I love the retros, of course, uh, now especially as I'm an owner of a Speed Twin. Um, the Bobber is one of my lesser favourite. I prefer the Speedmaster to the Bobber if you're going to go down that sort of cruiser type route. Um, but yeah, what a great bike, it's beautifully made and I'm sure, again, that one will sell well when it initially comes out. If the price is right, we'll see. Okay, next story, again, the MCN 250, I'm always putting these out. This is a uh, pitting head-to-head -head a couple of uh, what I would call modern retros, if you like. So the Yamaha XSR 700 against the Husqvarna Svartpilen 701. So they're sort of retro, 
but sort of modern. And that's where I have a problem with these particular bikes. Um, I haven't ridden either of these. I've ridden the XSR 900, which has the same issue. I have ridden the uh, Vitpillen, which has the same issue, uh, in that they, they sort of ate back to the shape of old bikes, yet they are thoroughly modern when you ride them. They've got LCD displays, they've got all the electronics, riding modes and so on. So they're kind of a halfway house. And I'm not quite sure whether that works. But uh, anyway, let's see what they said about picking these two bikes together on the uh, MCN 250, if I can find the verdict. Here you go, and Simon Hargreaves has written this one up. He's given the uh, Svartpillen 3 out of uh, 5 and the Yamaha XSR 700 4 out of 5. So he prefers the Yamaha. By the way, the Yamaha is about 8 grand. The Husqvarna is 8,900, so a bit more expensive. Out of those two, personally, I'd rather have the XSR 700. I just find the Husky styling a bit too quirky for my liking. Um, but anyway, he's, uh, he's had, obviously had a good ride of both of them, and he says that the, uh, one of the issues with both bikes is they are quite expensive because they're premium versions of these bikes. Uh, he says putting the Acrovo Acropovic on the X-Tribute, which is the Yamaha, uh, and then that comes out at 9,399, so yeah, getting expensive. He's saying that the Yamaha spec is just as much fun as Husky, more versatile with a pillion and got better luggage options, bigger tank range, um, and uh, basically more attractive as well. And I, and I, I would agree with him on that. Uh, but there we go. So that's them. What do you think of those bikes? Again, I haven't seen any of those in the wild, so I don't know how well they sell, but um, I'm not seeing them out there when I'm out riding. Right, and the last story before we get to parish notices, how are we doing on time? Well, not too bad. Uh, is this. Grinning like a cat is the uh, is the title here, and this is the uh, katana again. I don't want to give the katana too much of a slating because I'm always saying that I don't like it. So I must reiterate: when you ride it, uh, it rides beautifully. It is a really nice ride, and also when you see it in the flesh, it's much better in the flesh than it looks at in the pictures to me. But for me, I wasn't into biking when the original katana was around, so it has no kind of historical value for me. To me, it's just a new bike, uh, and um, that, those looks don't just quite do it for me, as I said before. But the the big problem with it, and this is a comment that I had a lot on my review that I did on the Katana, is the fact that it's only got a 12 litre fuel tank. So for a bike that you know you might want to do a bit of touring on, you're going to be stopping quite a lot at fuel stations, especially as I imagine it's probably quite thirsty. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to kind of give the Katana a little bit of love, because uh, at certain angles it looks all right and it does ride beautifully. So uh, you know, if you've got one, don't hold it against me that I'm always saying that I don't like them. Just a personal opinion. I've got no, you know, at the end of the day, I don't have any, um, uh, you know, I, I'm just the same as you, I'm not an expert on these, I'm just telling you what I think about the looks of these boxes. It's entirely a subjective matter. Alrighty, uh, let's get on to some parish notices then, I promised you I'd tell you what's coming up on the channel. Uh, before I go on to that, I must just say a huge thank you to my Patreons. Uh, these are the guys that support the channel financially, uh, along with my sponsors. Um, my sponsors of this video is Custom Fit Guards, they're the guys that make the earplugs that you see me wearing on the touring video, so thank you to those as well. But uh, yeah, just wanted to doubly shout out to the Patreons, you've been fantastic. Uh, I've been running that scheme now for three months. Uh, I'll put a link up in the corner. Go and have a look at my Patreon video if you don't know what that's all about. Uh, and uh, it'd be great to have you come and join us there if you can. Um, in terms of what's coming up on the channel, uh, before my next um, live stream, which is when I'll give you another update like this, I've got loads of videos coming, of course. Uh, in case you didn't realise, I publish videos, I guarantee to publish videos uh, on Mondays and Thursdays. And then if I've got extra stuff to put up, I'll put that up on Saturdays as well. In fact, looking at my schedule, I think between now and Christmas, pretty much every Monday, Thursday and Saturday, uh, I've got a video, so three videos a week for the foreseeable future. But coming up in, in the short term, I've got a long-term review of my 899 Panigale. I've owned that now for, what, I think four years? Uh, so it's high time I did a little look back at what's been going on with that bike, how much it's cost me and so on. So if you're interested in the 899 or indeed any Panigale, look out for that video coming up soon. I've got more on the KTM 790 Adventure, which KTM very kindly lent me for a couple of weeks. Uh, so I've got more uh, videos coming up on that if you're interested in, a, in a, what I think is an ideal size sort of mid-range uh, adventure bike. More on the Speed Twin. This is the bike that I recently bought, the Triumph Speed Twin. Absolutely beautiful retro bike, but it rides like a beast. So I've got, uh, I'm starting to make some videos about my uh, ownership experience with that. So I've got one of those coming up between now and the next uh, live stream. Um, what else? Oh, some off-road stuff coming. I did some uh, filming last month uh, up with Toro Adventure in Spain, uh, in fact not Toro Adventure, uh, with Toro Trail, their sister company, uh, and I took the opportunity to ride their brand new fleet of Husqvarna TE 250s, so I did a sort of a review come ride uh, on the Husky 250, so look out for that, beautiful weather, amazing scenery, always good fun with Lyndon and the crew out there, so that video is coming up as well soon, and of course many, many more. 
date for your diary, talking of the live stream, uh, August the 15th, 8 p.m. UK time. If you can join me live, that's where my next live stream is. I always love doing those. It'd be great to have you along, uh, and I'll try and get through as many of your questions as I can. Um, so yeah, August the 15th, 8 p.m. is the next live stream. That's the plan anyway, providing no technical gremlins get me. Um, oh, I also just want to say hello, hello to everybody that I saw at the recent uh, Wild Bad Weekender. This is the annual event that Richie Vida puts on. I don't know if you're aware of Richie Vida's channel. Go and check him out if you've not uh, if you've not seen him. He does some great tour videos an amazing photography and is a lovely guy as well. He had a big event at the weekend up north somewhere at a secret location near Derby. Uh, I went along as well on Saturday evening. Uh, I met loads of you there. It was an epic night, really good fun. Uh, I'm just about over the hangover now. Uh, great stuff, so really nice to meet you guys up there and maybe I'll see some more of you there next year. All right, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. Dunfly. Cheerio.